Hello everybody, hello dear students. Uh, today we will start, from today we will start uh, our three courses because of the pandemic. Uh, today's topic is continuous rectification unit. And we will try to show you about the, some theories about uh, the rectification, what's a rectification, what's a continuous rectification. And then we will try to show you some experiments that can be taken in this equipment. So, what's rectification? Generally, you know from the general chemistry and also uh, the next other courses that uh, there are mixtures that we have. Generally, compounds in universe, in our planet, becomes as a mixtures. And we need, in some cases, to separate them, to purify them. In this case, we have, of course, a different kind of separation methods. Generally, mixtures can be separated in physical methods. And one of these methods is distillation. What is distillation? Distillation generally uh, can be separate uh, homogeneous liquid mixtures. That components in this mixture are miscible in each other. When we use distillation, distillation can be used when there is a enough boiling temperature difference between the components. The best and popular example about this distillation is alcohol water mixture. Of course, maybe you know that at the uh, one atmospheric pressure, the boiling temperature of water is 100 degrees centigrade and the alcohol is 78 degrees centigrade. And this difference makes it possible to make a simple distillation method. When we heat the mixture around 78, 80 degrees centigrade, of course, one of these components, that alcohol, starts ethyl alcohol. Of course, we are talking about the ethyl alcohol. Start to boil. And we can collect these boiling uh, vapors in different containers, and in this case, we can separate this mixture from one another. What's a simple distillation? Generally, in simple distillation, we need a boiler for heating and boiling of this mixture, and condenser. Condenser is to condense the boiled, the low boiling liquid by coolers. Generally, of course, in simple distillation, we use the water, tap water as a cooler. And of course we can need some kind of the containers to then to collect this uh, vapor in there. But in some cases uh, it's not easy to separate uh, all mixtures by simple distillation. In some cases we need to make a distillation in different steps, in many steps. So. They call it as a multiple distillation. So first uh, we make a distillation, then we collect the uh, condensed liquid, then we make another distillation and then another distillation. Of course, to make a multiple distillation, it is uh, high cost because in each case you have to get, collect the liquid, then heat it again until it's boiling temperature, then collect the vapor, and again, heat it until it's boiling temperature. So in this case, they, we can use a rectification method. Rectification method, in this case, we have a column that uh, instead of the boiler and the condenser, we have also the column. That column, in this case, makes rule like a, a multiple distillation process. When the uh, liquid starts to boil, um, we can, when the liquid boils uh, in column uh, through the bottom to top, it can be again cooled and collected and several times can be, uh, let's say, boiled. And in this case, of course, there is another method of collecting the uh, boiling liquid with a reflux. Reflux, but we can, uh, when the process is going, on, when the vapor is collected, we can condense and return one part of this uh, boiling liquid again to the system. When this uh, top product 
come through again through the column, of course it will uh, meet the boiling part, boiling vapor mixture, and it will make its separation efficiency high. In this case, of course, uh, making a, a cost to decrease, so to become not high cost process, to become a low cost process that can be done in industry. Now let's start talk about equipment that, as you remember, we talk about the distillation, rectification, and now let's see how this equipment will help us in, uh, in this theory. How can we understand this theory through this equipment? Of course, this equipment, we generally start to talk our senior students. Uh, so when they come to here, they know the many uh, main courses about the chemical engineering, separation, uh, process control, mass transfer, heat transfer, and other main courses. So they are generally ready for this equipment. Uh, we just ask them to learn about the manual of the uh, equipment and then start. What we can do this equipment? This is, as you see, it's a continuous rectification unit uh, that generally in here we can make a separation of alcohol and water mixture. Of course, why alcohol and water mixture? Because it is more safe and clean mixture. Uh, generally, this process, of course, maybe you know that uh, in petroleum field, they separate it. They call it as a fractional distillation of the petroleum. Fractional means there are more than two components in the mixture. So they make a distillation step by step, by component by component because of their boiling point differences. In here, we will try to show and demonstrate this process in simple way. What we have in this equipment? Of course, this equipment contains some parts like a main control. This part is the electronic control of this equipment. Equipment main parts and the computer. Because this can be controlled by software, or you can control it by the manual way. Also, let me show you that uh, some uh, main parts, of course, we have here the main switch, PC uh, connections, emergency stop. Generally, in this case, of course, the safety is important because we use the high electric voltage uh, heater. We have a water, hot liquid. So, it is also um, the safety must be obeyed that to not hurt they yourselves, to not be shocked by electric, to not touch the hot surfaces. When they get the bottom product, top product, they can be hot because of boiling temperature of water is something over 100 degree. And generally the bottom product comes from 95, 96 degree temperature that is of course uh, very hot. So uh, for students, it is needed to be uh, obey the safety rules that uh, to not touch these parts. Also, there are some safety rules for the equipment itself. For example, as you see, the low level indicator, which shows that now in our boiler, we have a lower, low than three liter of the liquid. Because there is a heater in 4,000 watt power, and it is designed to work under the liquid. So when it becomes the low, low than three liters, it can be damaged the uh, equipment itself. So they use the low level indicator that when this level goes down, uh, heater of automatically will be shut off. Also there is a PC connection and PC connection control uh, sensor that shows that now, because we didn't start the software, so it shows that the in this case, uh, computer or software cannot control the unit. So you have to mention it and pay attention. Let me now talk about the parts of the equipment. Which parts we have? As I said, there is a control part that, of course, in here we have a temperatures. There are 16 points in the equipment that we can see, monitor the temperatures. Of course, this temperature can be monitored from the uh, computers 
and from the manual from here. From the temperature of the boiler to the condenser to the bottom heat exchanger, we can see. Of course, there is a heater part that from, from zero to 4,000 watt, we can control here, of course, from this case or from the software. We have a return flux, flux ratio. It is because of a reflux. As we said, the reflux is a point to increase the separation efficiency when we return the some part of the uh, condensed liquid back to the column. And we can control this. Then we have a feed flow ratio and column pressure drop. What about the feed flow ratio? In this equipment, we can do several experiments. First of all, we can do batch process or continuous process. So batch process and continuous. What's the batch process? Batch process generally we just take a, some portion of the liquid, we start this process, and then when our uh, feed stops, finish, we stop the experiment. But when do the continuous process, of course we need to have a uh, extra, let's say, excess amount of the uh, compound that we can give, the mixture that we can give to the system to make the process to go continuously. Now let's see the parts that, as I said, there is a boiling of the uh, mixture, that we boil here the mixture of the alcohol and water, then vapors go through the column. We have a two kinds of column, the packed column and the sieved column. Um, so we can change these columns, uh, it depends on our experiments, which kind of experiment we will do. Uh, they have their own advantage and disadvantage also. Uh, and then we have a condenser in here that the vapor of the alcohol water mixture will be condensed. Generally, the, of course, the alcohol will be rich in that part and collected. We have here also, as I said, we can do the batch process and the continuous process. When we go the continuous process, of course, we need to give a feed to the boiler because when our alcohol we separate from the bottom product, of course, the amount of the liquid decreases. When amount of a liquid decreases, of course, the uh, percentage of alcohol change. To make it a constant, we need to add a feeds. These are the feed containers that we can give through the uh, this point uh, to the uh, column. Also, I want to show you the other kind of column, the sieved column. As you see, there is a plate. You can change the number of plates and you can see the, how it will affect the uh, separation efficiency. Also, you can mention that there is a three different parts that our feed can be inlet. Of course, this points mean something. Uh, when we add the feet from the up bottom part, when we add it to the middle part, when we add it to the top part. Generally, if we have a uh, in, uh, mixture, we have a high percentage of the low boiling liquid, then we will add them from the bottom part. If we have a high boiling liquid in more in the mixture. We will give them from the top side. If they are nearly equal, we will give it from the middle part. So, uh, of course, we can <coughs> attach the sieved one or the packed one to this equipment. And if you pay attention, in here we add the packed one and it has only one inlet point from the middle. Um, what we have else? Of course, we said that in this equipment we can make a different experiments. Of course, both they may be a batch or continuous, but also we can change the conditions. We can change the pressure of the system. So we can do the vacuum distillation or ambient temperature distillation. Of course, when the pressure will decrease, the boiling point also will decrease. Why we use generally the vacuum distillation? If you have a mixture, if you have a compound that they are sensitive to the temperature, in this case, we generally make a vacuum distillation to decrease the temperature. So 
in low temperature, uh, the temperature will not affect our compound, so generally it will not uh, decompose our compound. Also, we can do this experiment in our equipment. For this, we have here a, a water jet pump that with the help of a water flow, we can decrease the pressure in that equipment. Also, there are another uh, possibilities in our equipment. What we have? If you pay attention to this part, this is a bottom heat exchanger part. Why we need this kind of heat exchanger? When we do the continuous process, of course, bottom product with a high concentration of high boiling temperature liquid, we have to leave it from the system. Of course, when you leave the product with high temperature, it means that we lose the temperature, we lose the heat. So to compensate it, we need extra energy, excess energy to become to the boiling point. To prevent it, to decrease the cost of equipment, cost of the process, we can heat the feed before the entering of the system. They call it as a preheated feed. What we can do for this? You can see that the, our feed tanks comes from here with the pump through the heat exchanger to the column. When we connect through this valve, our bottom product and feed, when they meet in heat exchanger, bottom product transfers its heat to the feed. So before entering to the system, feed heats. So they call it as a preheated feed that, of course, it will help us to uh, have a low cost uh, process. So the another, I want to mention you the column pressure drop in here that you can see that uh, it's now 3.9 because we are not starting the equipment. When we started, it is recommended to give between 10 and 20 millibar. What does it mean? What it affect? It is a pressure difference between the top and bottom of the column. When it is lower than 10 millibar, it means that the boiling intensity is lower. So we have a low vapor and our experiment will take more time. When it is higher than 20 millibar, it means that there is a high intensity of the boiling. So the high amount of vapor comes and so it may damage because of the high pressure to the system. So uh, we need to control it. Of course, the controlling will be through the heater. If we uh, load the heater power, the, the boiling intensity will decrease, so the pressure difference will decrease. When we start, when we uh, increase the heater power, of course, the boiling intensity will increase and the process uh, will go and the pressure difference will increase. Also, as I mentioned before, there is a part that we can see the temperature of the 16 points starting from the boiler, the seven different points of the column, condenser inlet and outlet temperature. As I mentioned, the condenser cooler system is the tap water. And then we have a temperatures in the uh, this uh, bottom heat exchangers. And these ones can be, can be controlled from here. As you see here, written is one and two. So we can control the unit with local from this controlling part, or if we switch it to the computer, then we can start the controlling from the software. And let me show you the part of the software here. As you see, there is also the system, system let's call it a uh, diagram that show the part of the, our equipment. That's our boiler, co our column, the condenser, bottom heat exchanger, feeds, pump for feeds. We have here reflux parts. Reflux parts we have here too. Reflux part is electronic valves that can be open and closed. Uh, generally, we give them as a percentage. Open per for example, if you have a total of 10 seconds, if you make a 50% of reflux, it means that in five seconds the left one will be open, in another next five seconds the right one will be open. 
as you see, we can, when we go to the software, we can control the process from here. We can control it by manually. Manually, we can control the, this part. Manually, we can control the temperature of the boiler here. We can control the uh, feed pump here. We can control the reflux. Also, we can control it, as you see, the auto can be controlled. So we can give it different points to control it out. Also, the boiler can be controlled in auto part. So also we can, in, when you go to the auto control system, auto control regime, we will go, two points can be controlled. Temperature 3 is the temperature of the boiler. Temperature 12 is the temperature of the upper part of the column, top part of the column. Also, you can see that this part is a vapor outlet. This is our condenser part, water inlet, water outlet. You can see the temperature differences of the inlet and outlet can be seen from here. And you can see that this part is about the bottom heat exchangers. Now you can see that there is a level too low. It shows that we don't have the uh, compound, we don't have a mixture in our boiler. Now I think it's time to start the experiment. Today we will go to the batch process experiment. Why not continuous? Uh, why or when continuous, when batch? Generally when you are doing some experiments, demonstrations and or a low amount production, generally they go the batch process. But if you do the really uh, great production, high efficiency, high production, they generally, in industry, they use the continuous process. Because instead of the batch, you don't need to, uh, each time to cool down the boiler, then take out the products, and then again add the compounds, again add the mixture, and again heat it. It is also the continuous process seems uh, low cost than the batch process that they, in industry, they do it. You know, of course, in laboratory way, batch will take a low time than the continuous part. Today, we will go with the batch process. For next time, we will try to make a continuous rectification process. Of course, for this uh, process, as I mentioned before, uh, we need a, our cold water mixture. Generally, it is recommended to use a 25 mass percentage of alcohol to water. For this, we will firstly make a 10 liters of 25 percent uh, alcohol water mixture. Now let's start our experiment. As I mentioned, we will do a batch process. For this, before we uh, make approximately 20, 25 percent of 10 liter alcohol uh, water mixture. Now we will add this mixture to our boiler. And of course, as I mentioned, because of the safety, uh, if there is a level of the mixture is low than three liters, uh, there will be a, this low level indicator which will show that uh, heater in danger. So you have to fill it at least at three liters. When you do the uh, continuous process, there is a siphon in the boiler that it prevents the uh, leave of the liquid uh, from six liters. So if you do the continuous process, uh, our boiler will let you just make a process between 10 and six liters. Why? Because when, if the liquid will go fastly, the bottom product will leave fastly from the boiler, our feed pump cannot compensate it. So they did this, let's say, safety process that to prevent this, uh, this, this balance, so they make it as a between 10 and 6 liters. Uh, when it reached to more than 3 liters, as you see here, now we have a low level indicator turned off because our uh, volume now is more than 3. We can go until the 10 liter and then we start. Now, let's see. Uh, we said that our, we have approximately 20-25% of the mixture. Let's see uh, in practical 
what is our real percentage? Now let's let's measure the real concentration of the our alcohol and mix water mixture. For this generally they use a density relation. We have a table that in different temperatures the density of mixture will show us the percentage of the alcohol in water. Of course the mass percentage. For this reason we need to uh, first measure the density of the mixture and the temperature of the mixture. Then we can find this density in the table and we can see and understand that what's the real uh, concentration. For this of course different way we have to uh, measure the density. The old one is aerometric that can you give it like uh, here. You fill the cylinder with the mixture and you just sink the aerometric in here. And you read these points. When the water or mixture level comes to these points, it means that its density is given here. Then you can use the thermometer, a different thermometer. Of course, you can use just the, like these thermometers, the mercury thermometer, or the electronic thermometer. Okay, then we can calculate, the, we can measure the density with this, and of course the temperature can be measured with thermometer. There are different thermometers, like alcohol thermometers, mercury thermometers, that you just sink it to the mixture and wait in a time, and you can see the temperature, or you can use, of course, the electronic thermometers, like a, uh, like this one. For example, we have here a type key temperature thermometer that you can just sync it here and you can see the temperature. But also, in this case, to, uh, to have a, to use a low time, to use a less time, uh, we can use another equipment. Generally, this is a viscosimeter, viscometer, but it has also the property that can measure the density and the temperature. We set the temperature to 30, and just some, a little amount of 3, 5 milliliters instead of the 500 milliliters, we can just add the 5 milliliter of the mixture to this equipment and wait until the temperature stabilizes, and we can see the density here that 0 0.96 and then we go to the table at 30 degree 0 0.96 is around 22 yeah yes if you go here and you see that the 96 it's something about it. 22 percentage of the alcohol we have. Okay, after adding our 10 liter of the 22 percent alcohol mixture, then we can start our process. Of course, before starting, we need to open the cooling water, because in this case, uh, cooling water is used for the condensing. Generally, as they said, it will be a 100, around the 150 liters per minute. After this, it is recommended to close this part. If you are doing the batch process, of course, the fit is not needed. You just close it to prevent the extra thermal load to here because it can lose the heat from here. And another, as you remember, we said that these are the uh, column pressure drop measures. It's because of the process, before processing, it's possible that there may condensed vapor. So we need to sink out uh, this liquid that it will not affect our measurements. Let's see if we have something here. It's okay. But what about here? Yes, as you see there is some drops of liquid that will make some errors in our calculation. So let's close it. Now we have a 150 milli of the water goes through. We have a 10 liter. Now it is time to start the heater. And of course, we uh, decided to make first an uh, auto control by the software process. So, uh, we will firstly, we will control the temperature 3, it means the boiler temperature. Let's adjust it something around 95 degree 
centigrade. And then we can easily start the heater from here. As you see, heater, it needs to be started. When we push, the heater will start. And here, as I said, we can see, monitor the temperatures from here. This is a temperature three, it's a boiler temperature. As I've said before, we can also control the temperature of the 12. It means the temperature of this part, the upper part of the cone. But when you try to control this, of course, its temperature will not be 95. It's recommended to give something around the boiling temperature of the low boiling water. In this case, alcohol, and we can give 78, 80 degrees around that the system can control. And you see, the process start and our uh, heater nearly works with 100% of its power. After starting our heater, as you see, it's nearly 100% uh, works. Let's also uh, regulate our return flux ratio. Let's start it and first arrange it something around 100%. It means that all condensed liquid will go to the back to the column. And let me start it from here. And because we do the system in ambient pressure, of course this part is open, the water jet pump is closed. And what we will do next? After some time, we will have some uh, condensed liquid here. Uh, our work will be to take the samples time by time to measure its mass and percentage. We will collect our mixtures and we will see that uh, through the time how will the efficiency of the uh, separation process will be. And at the end of the all, uh, our students will try to make a mass balance of the all process and to see the efficiency of the equipment at these conditions. Now approximately after 20 minutes you can see that we have a first uh, condensed part, we call it as a uh, first sample. Now what will we do? We just will take some uh, sample, we will measure its concentration and mass. Please. Now she will take a full amount of the sample. Okay. And they will measure and calculate the mass percentage. So we will go through this way. Nearly 10 different samples will be taken. Their composition will be calculated. Their mass will be calculated. Uh, after that, at the end, uh, we will make a mass pulse. Of course, this may vary because of the uh, process difference. In this case, we just do it in the ambient temperature. You can do this also in uh, vacuum. You can change the reflux return ratio between zero and 100. Also, uh, you can do uh, continuous process. But today, as we do the batch process, uh, it will, these parts will uh, okay for us. Now my assistant will give me the first sample. Thank you very much. And so they measure that it is a 79% of alcohol in the first sample. Uh, we will do like a 10 samples we will get from here. Also you can see that our process is continuing. And we will get this, uh, all these samples. They will calculate their mass and their mass percentage. At the end, they will write a report about it and efficiency about the batch process in ambient pressure. Today, I think it is enough for the batch process in ambient conditions. I want to thank my assistants here. I want to thank you. Uh, see you.